Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good afternoon. Hello, thank you. I'm Terry, Terry Cooper, and I'm the chairman of 4 Networking. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to take you on my journey. I'm going to take you on my journey through sales. 40 years of sales and 40 years of tales. And we're going to go back to the 70s. Now, you don't have to remember the 70s because there's a whole lot on TV with the 70s recently. Life on Mars, repeats of the Sweeney. So you're going to know a bit about the 70s. Well, you see, I started selling in the 70s. And um, that came about because I had a job in a factory and then I went, was, got promoted to go into the office. And my first day in the office was in the accounts office. And I remember walking in and being given the, the desk by the door and by the window, which was going to be freezing cold in winter and boiling hot in summer. But the good news was, at the end of the first week, George, who'd been there for 45 years, who had the desk in the corner by the radiator, retired. And we all moved up one desk. And I could clearly see my career progression from that time. But the, the high pot part of the week was when the sales guys came in, because they chatted up all the girls in the office and they drove four Cortinas. And I wanted a Ford Cortina with a real passion. So I thought, I might have a go at this selling lark. So I bought a local paper and I went for my interview, first interview as a salesperson with a photocopying company. And that's when I met my first sales manager, a guy called Vic Keeble. Now Vic came from the west end of London and there was all five foot two of him in his platform boots and his, the length of his hair was about the same width of his flares. So he gave me a typical sales interview of the 70s, a 20 minute chat, and at the end of it he said, do you know lad, he said, I like the cut of your jib, I think I'll give you a try. Let's go down the pub. <laughs> so we went out, the, and there was a pub conveniently right next door. I remember we went in and we had a pub lunch, two games of darts, and then I learned something about Vic. Vic liked a couple of pints at lunchtime just to take the edge off driving in the <laughs> afternoons. <laughs> well, it was the 70s, guys, it was the 70s. Anyway, we came out the pub, and there it was, my dream car a two-litre Cortina gear with white leather upholstery and a brown vinyl roof and comm star wheels. As I say, I wanted to be just like Vic, but of course, taller. So he said, we'll go and make a call. So we went around the corner, did this call, and we came up with an order for two photocopiers. And I thought, this is easy. And you know, that's when I learnt my first lesson about sales. Because Vic had taken me into a ringer. He'd set this order up ages ago, and we'd walked out with, a, with say, an order for two copiers. And I discovered from that day on, that sales and business was about hard work and persistence because I had to go, you know, I had to start from scratch. And in those days, we used to do a thing called cold canvassing. Well, it was cold in the winter, it was warm canvassing in the summer, where I walk high streets and industrial estates collecting compliment slips and business cards so I could go into the office on a Tuesday afternoon uh, and that was my phone in afternoon. Remember, guys, in those days, Martin's nodding there and that, remember in those days, there was, there was, no, uh, there was no email, there was no pages, there was no internet, there was no tweet, tweeting, there was no, you know. So, but, but what we did have, of course, was, well, I had a, a, a second-hand uh, Mark I uh, Escort, uh, shoe leather, and a bag full of ten pence pieces, and a nose for all the telephone boxes that hadn't been used as urinals the night before. <laughs> so you remember the 70s, somebody's nodding. Um, so I had to gather these cards, and then we had a, a, a telephone afternoon where I, we'd share a phone and we'd make phone calls. But guys, I survived. And I, not only did I survive, but I learned the lesson well about sales and the lesson well about business. So my first lesson to you today is there is no substitute for hard work and persistence. If you're prepared to get up early, you're prepared to go out there and you're prepared to do it, you will eventually be successful. Let's move on now to the 80s. What was I doing in the 80s? What was I driving in the 80s? So I was driving uh, a Granada, I had my first really quality car. I had a, a lovely, one of the German built Mark II Granadas and that had uh, brown velour upholstery, Ooh, and I actually managed to squeeze the extra to get a sunshine roof. You know, first to the glass roofs, leaked like a sieve, but I was so <laughs> proud of it. Uh, and what was I doing? I was a sales manager running a sales team all across the whole of the south of England. Who's been to Slough? Yeah, one or two people, great. Do you know it hasn't changed in 40 years? <laughs> it's still an enormous industrial estate, surrounded by a few houses. So I, I got two guys covering Slough. I got uh, Duncan, who covered the west side of Slough, and Alan, who covered the east side of Slough. Now, Duncan was my best sales guy. Duncan was always phoning in and saying, do you know, Terry, these new copiers are fantastic. I love the new collators. Isn't this new literature wonderful? Haven't I got a fantastic area? 
Alan was always calling in and saying, do you know, Terry, um, I could do with a bigger area. If only I had a better car with more carrying capacity, these new machines are rubbish. What we need is a better collator. And I'll wait for the new literature. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll. I said, I'll come down, we'll have lunch, and we'll, well, I'll go out with you for the afternoon. So I went down, went to the Burnie, had gin and tonics. Well, it was the 80s. <laughs> Guys, it was the 80s. So we came out the Burnie, and um, we went on to the Slough Industrial Estate, and I said to him, um, have you been in there, Al? No, Terry. Have you been in there, Al? No, Terry. Have you been in there, Al? No, Terry. Have you got the picture, guys? Okay. Uh, Alan, bless him, had convinced himself that he didn't have all the tools necessary to be successful in sales and successful in business. But that's purely a mindset, because let me tell you something, and this is based on my 44 years experience, let me tell you something, you will never, ever, ever have everything you need to be successful in sales and successful in business. You just have to get on with it. And if you get on with it, you will be successful. You just have to get on with it. It all comes back to a wonderful expression, which I'm sure you've heard hundreds of times, called right mental attitude. We have to have the right mental attitude. You can convince yourself that you can be successful. You can also convince yourself that you're not going to be successful. It's about a mindset. I was listening to someone the other day to say, wake up with a smile. I absolutely believe in that. I absolutely believe that the... That, 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 Tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life, so you should wake up with a positive attitude. If you wake up with a positive attitude, you'll have a positive day. If you wake up with a negative attitude, guess what? You're going to have a negative day. Okay. Let's move on to the 90s. What was I driving in the 90s? So it gets better. I was driving a 4-litre Lexus LS400, probably the best car that I've ever owned. It was absolutely fantastic. It was electric everything, nothing went wrong with it. You had carpet that you could sink into. I absolutely loved that car. In fact, I kept it longer than any other car I've ever kept. It was absolutely brilliant. But what I was doing in there, I was running um, a, uh, a, a part of a, of a big multinational PLC. And I learned a very valuable lesson in the 90s, a very valuable lesson about business and a, a lesson about sales. I learned about something that we all come into in life, we have it for free, and unfortunately, in business, we can give it away. And that is honesty. So, and, and I've, I've got your choir there for a moment because I just want you to think about that. I'm not talking about criminal dishonesty. I'm talking about absolute honesty as far as business is concerned. Because if you're totally honest with yourself, with your customers, about your product and service, about the help that you want to give to everybody, then you're never going to have to tell a lie. And it's okay in business to make a profit. Actually, it's worse if you don't make a profit because how can you give customer service? So if you're not honest with yourself and about your product and service, then how are you going to be successful? I learned the lesson of honesty from a most remarkable guy, a guy called John Byford. And John was our sales director at the time. He eventually became the, the chairman of another company that I worked with. And John was an absolutely amazing guy because um, he came from, from, from the East End of London, and his father was a porter at Billingsgate Fish Market. So he didn't have, all he really wanted to do was work in the markets, but so he didn't have a, a, a really brilliant education. And because he didn't have a brilliant education, he was the best listener uh, of anybody I've ever known. And if John was in, uh, in a sales situation, he would listen really, really carefully to what was being said. And at the end of it, when, when things were decided, John would go up to the person that he'd been talking to and he'd hold out his hand. And he'd take the person's hand and he'd put his hand on top of that person and he'd say, that's a deal then. And it's a very powerful uh, thing to do because John believed absolutely that if you let that person down, then you had to send your hand in a box. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? But that was his belief. And as a sales director, that was incredibly powerful. And as the chairman of a big multinational PLC, that was amazingly powerful because that graduated right the way down the, the company that if you have an honest way of doing business, you will always do well in your business. Now, don't bend the truth is another way about keeping uh, things honest we, because we get in those situations, don't we, sometimes where we think, somebody says, can I have it by Tuesday? And you think, well, yeah, probably. So I'll, yeah, I'll say yes. And guess what? They can't have it by Tuesday. In fact, they can't have it by Thursday. In fact, they can't have it to the following Tuesday. What does that do? It destroys the confidence that that customer has in you. And are they going to order from you again? Are they going to tell everybody how brilliant you are at your service and delivery? 
Of course they're not. So that's why I say that honesty is absolutely amazing and so uh, pertinent where business is concerned. OK, let's move on to this current century. Let's move on to, not today, but to 2006, because it was in 2006 where I started my business and where I joined for networking. And as I, as I started to talk to our members uh, within 4N, and even when I talk to them today, I always say to them, so what's your biggest challenge in business? And, and do you know the most common answer I get? In fact, about 90% of the time, people say to me, do you know, Terry, it's sales. You see, I'm not very good at sales. If only I was better at sales, I'd be more successful in business. And then, that, which makes me think, because I had a formal training in sales, it makes me think, why is this so difficult? And then I cottoned on, because people build sales up to be difficult in their own minds. Martin will know this, he spends a lot of time talking to people about it. It builds them up to be difficult in their own minds. Sales is about having a conversation. Think about something that you're absolutely passionate about. Cars, your children, your holidays, whatever. When you're talking to somebody in a pub over a dinner party, you absolutely radiate passion about your product and service. That's what sales is about. Sales is about having a conversation with passion, having an honest conversation with passion. And th there is no myth to sales. Let me ask you a question. Would you, would you buy from somebody you didn't like, you didn't know, and you didn't trust? No, of course you wouldn't. None of us would. So by having a conversation, you build rapport. By building rapport, you actually make a connection with somebody. By making a connection with somebody, it gives you an opportunity to talk honestly about your product and service. Then you have to do the thing that everybody thinks is really difficult at the end. And I'm going to amaze you here, because in 44 years of doing this, guess what? No one, no one has ever struck me for asking for an order. Is that amazing? I've never been physically assaulted in asking for an order. Do you know the worst thing that's ever happened to me? No, somebody said no. Do you know, and I can cope with no, because what does no mean in sales? So it means not yet. Sometimes it means yes, you're right, because you can turn a no into a yes. But actually, what it does is no means not yet. Actually, I don't mind if it means no, because if it means no, I can go away and talk to someone else that's going to say yes. But it's perfectly all right to ask the question. In fact, I'm going to share something else with you. When you've had a great conversation with somebody and you've convinced them about your product and service, why would you not ask them to buy from you? Because aren't you then aren't they going to think, well, they don't want me as a customer? There is no downside for asking for the order, but the thing to do is do it with a smile. So let's have a, have a quick recap. There's no substitute for hard work and persistence. You'll never have everything you want to be successful in sales, but you have everything because it's right mental attitude. Honesty about yourself, your product and your service, and honesty with your customers is the most important thing that you've got and can possibly have. And always, 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 ask for an order. There is absolutely no downside. Guys, I've hoped you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Smile, be chat, join for networking.